One month ago today, Superstorm Sandy slammed into the East Coast. It killed at least 125 Americans. The storm caused at least $62 billion in damage. Sandy also destroyed 100 miles of shoreline. Fixing those beaches will require a lot of sand, which is becoming harder to find. As Ben Tracy reports, some of California's most famous beach towns are now fighting over it. The ocean is going to come back and claim its territory no matter what you do. Jefferson Wagner has surfed the waters off Malibu, California since the 1960s and is the town's former mayor. So there really is no beach left here when the tide comes in. That's correct. He took us to Malibu's broad beach, which no longer lives up to its name. It once looked like this. <laughs> now low tide is the only time you can find a sliver of sand to sit on. As of five, six years ago, uh, the sand was right now would be over our heads five or six years ago. We'd be underneath the sand. We would be under the sand right now today. This public beach is being battered by increasingly strong storms and rising sea levels, threatening multi-million dollar homes. Those same homes are blocking the natural replenishment of sand from the canyons above. So with every wave and every tide, the beach is being erased. Much of Broad Beach's sand has ended up here at Zuma Beach, about a mile down the shore. This beach is owned by Los Angeles County, and it doesn't plan to give the sand back. Broad Beach has broad pockets. It's been home to Hollywood's elite, Steven Spielberg, Pierce Brosnan, Dustin Hoffman, and Sylvester Stallone. A year ago, homeowners here built a two-mile-long rock wall to protect their property. Now they've taxed themselves an estimated $20 million so they can go shopping for sand. They tried Manhattan Beach 35 miles down the coast, where they planned to dredge offshore. After all, back in the 1920s, Manhattan Beach sent its sand west to build Hawaii's Waikiki Beach. But this time, the town's mayor drew a line, yes, in the sand. Malibu tried to steal our sand, and all the money in Malibu cannot buy Manhattan Beach sand. They could go to the desert and get plenty of sand there. There are likely willing sellers out in the Mojave Desert, but it would take about 60,000 truckloads to bring in the 600,000 cubic yards of sand Broad Beach needs. Sand is now also a hot commodity on the East Coast. Hurricane Sandy washed away entire beaches along the New Jersey and New York shorelines. After the storm, we saw the damage firsthand on New Jersey's Long Beach Island. When Hurricane Sandy hit this island, she plowed through sand dunes and the beach, not only destroying houses like this one, but filling almost all of the streets with mountains of sand. Some of that will be used to restore beaches and dunes, yet there is now a debate as to how much of the shoreline can or should be rebuilt. It's estimated to cost $8 million per mile. Meanwhile, sea levels are expected to rise and storms intensify as the climate changes and further erodes the country's coasts. We're seeing it here. There's no denying it any longer. Jefferson Wagner says there's a reason even Broad Beach money can't buy a solution to its sand problem. I think um, it's starting to finally, you know, sink in that it's not going to be an easy task. There's, nobody's willing to give up this asset. This is why people come to the beach. A beach that narrows by the day. For CBS This Morning, Ben Tracy, Malibu. Man, I love being on the water and I love beaches, so this is a kind of sad story. It is a sad story, I know, and uh, certainly still concerned about since it's a month since Sandy, about all the people who are still struggling. Yeah.